Hello everybody, it is your professor Rocco your boy coming at you once again with an Age of Sigmar video. In this class, we had another field trip. Your boy's out here going around the east coast. Uh, this time we went to Shorehammer in Ocean City, Maryland. And uh, before we get into my recap of the very long and fun weekend, uh, this little little message here to help the channel grow. You know, leave a like, subscribe, share with a friend to help them learn Age of Sigmar and get good. And here's some really cool emotes that uh, my buddy uh, Hey GM Kenny came up because I needed something to fill this space. And he did really awesome, and I want to promote his art more. And he's an amazing tattoo artist. But now let's get into what is Shorehammer. All right, what, what's going on here? So, Shorehammer is a weekend-long gaming convention out in Maryland where it's everything that they jokingly... The, the person who runs it, his name is uh, Scott. Won't do the full name, won't dox him online or whatever. But Scott plays sometimes Warhammer at a Scott's Rules. You know, there, there's comp stuff. It's narrative-based. It's for the fun of the game and for the sake of fun. And everything tells stories and builds off each other between the different years of the different conventions that he runs. And, th you know, this is what it is. It starts, it was a Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. I only got to stay for three days. But uh, we came in on th on a Thursday night. And uh, let's just get right on to uh, everything that goes on here. So what events did I play in? On Thursday, I did the Big Behemoth Battle, which is a 900-point battle, uh, which actually ended up being, to get more people to play, it wasn't just Behemoths. It ended up being 900 points of stuff. But most of us did bring Behemoths to be big monsters running at each other. I let our inner childs out, you know. Um, and then on Friday, I was in a 1,500-point Age of Sigmar tournament. Where the in the whole the whole weekend the biggest rule was whether it was like forty k or AOS, well AOS specifically there were no named characters there were no tech list no B lacquer no go trek, no Marathi, and that was the main competitive thing, as well as the different uh the competitive comp as well as the different points limits, and for the fifteen hundred point tournament we played actually on a four foot by four foot table, uh which was interesting and with custom battle plans which which was fun and again it was refreshing to do all this because it's just you know how do other people see in house rule age of sigmar and i feel like more tournaments need to do this kind of a thing and then uh finally on saturday i played in the aos narrative big battle where it was uh order versus chaos as there was a big uh, chaos invasion coming in if i remember the story right and then anyone who brought death or destruction armies got used as mercenaries to be on either team. And the biggest question that I even have on here is, what were my lists? Because everyone's going to ask, and then I'm going to get comments saying list? With no question mark, just list, it never fails. And then I'll post the list, and I'll have them on here in the video. I'll, um, I'll probably not put them in the description because i want you to watch uh-huh because i have them here but let's start with the behemoth battle because i remember to take pictures so here's my first list i did living city uh and the big thing here is why did i do living city with my frost phoenix my griffin and my celestial hurricaneum so in this battle that was 900 points of stuff my list came in at 900 out on the dot I wanted to be able to have enough healing that I could play the whole game. You know, yes, I found a bunch of synergies of the, the blanket plus one to hit from my Hurricaneum. I've got the healing spell. I heal a wound on all my stuff. Uh, excuse my neighbor there. You know, I heal a wound on all my stuff at the start of my hero phase. I've got heroic recovery. Uh, but if one of my models dies, a third of my army's gone. Because uh, I only have the three models, and I got to use the new mount trait for the griffin. Uh, and, you know, how did it go? So we had, there were, it was um, like a, gosh, a very long table. 
it was two long tables. I want to say it was like a 12 foot long table, like a 12 foot by four foot. And you can see uh, next to the star, I had to play next to the star Drake because one of my buddies, because the, the other thing about this tournament is I signed up for it in like March, maybe April. Other people have corrected me on this. I don't remember the actual answer. It was in the spring, probably March. And the reason I came here and signed up for it then was a bunch of my buddies from my gaming club when I used to live uh, just outside of Philadelphia go to this event yearly, and I never got to go before. And then it was like a funny, oh, now that I moved, I finally get to go to it. And my goal for this was one of my buddies, one of my club mates named Kevin, had that Star Drake, and I was going to protect that damn Star Drake because he was very, very kind. As you can see, the big, it looks like an Arachnorok, but it was actually converted up to be a, uh, a Maw Crusher. Uh, the rest of Kevin's army is the screen right behind that tower. That's about to get blasted. So I'm like, I'm going to, the way I deployed, I encircled his Star Drake, and the way we were doing rules was it still gave me plus one to cast, so my Hurricane was on a plus two to cast. I kept casting Mystic Shield or Healing. Mostly Mystic Shield on my bird. Um, and it was just... It was just nice. And a lot of the bonuses that you could get... Like, you, if you controlled an objective, you uh, got plus one to your save characteristic, if I remember right. And we had... We got long ways here. Is We each had an objective in the middle of our deployment zone. So that 12-foot long table edge. And then in the middle of the table, there were five or six objectives and then there was the one in your opponent's territory so right where you see the mega gargant in the background there that's where their objective was ours is under it looks a little dark but it is a a a, a, a bell of doom or whatever the skaven uh hero is the gray seer on uh, the bell and you know we also as a house rule did not roll off for priority it was straight one team went and the other team went and I was a little late to the party. I did not know that. And when we, we my team finished deploying first, and they're like, oh, yeah, you know, let's let's go do this. And I'm like, oh, well, they take first turn. They're just going to move up, grab the objectives, then we move up and kill them. That's great, right? And I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and so what happened was we gave them first turn. Because part of me is like, oh, yeah, we'll get the double turn. I was the only one knowing that there wasn't a double turn allowed. I did not know. I said probably wouldn't have suggested the plan. But they moved up, took all the objectives, and then we moved up. And I know me on the far right there in that corner, um, Mike sent my griffin into... I, I ran past the Maw Crusher with the griffin. I didn't even run. You know, I had my 15 inches of movement charged in. Great time there. Into... A unit of Gore Gruntus that had taken an objective. Because again, not everybody had Behemoth. So they opened it up so people with armies that didn't have like a bunch of Behemoth could play. Which was awesome. Um, and my Griffin murdered the unit of pigs. I w with a little shooting, I believe, from a Hurricaneum. And then everything else just crashed in on that Maw Crusher. Because that was right before it charged into all the units behind that tower and murdered everything. And then um, there was like one hell pit abomination on our team left after that fight. And we eventually killed the Maw Crusher on our turn two. And then we swept up the far right of the board. We had like a fifth of the board good. And then I looked up down the table to see my teammates uh, had a little bit of a rough go of it. Our other teammates. Uh, they charged into all the stuff that was holding the middle objectives, and then most of our stuff that charged in died. But everybody had fun, which is the important part. I think we lost, like, 28 to 8 in the end because um, it was like you hold the objective. Each turn you hold the objectives, you get them. Uh, and we had two. That sounds right. We got... It was a blowout. But it got to the point where, you know, I... Once I found out how much the... Because I'm like, oh, do we score them at the beginning, the end? Because, you know, I read the pack of what the everything is. And stuff changed, which was all right, because it was just fun. And they um there were rules like if you got tabled 
and this wasn't in the pack, but it was like a known thing at the table. If you got tabled, you could bring back one of your units. So like someone lost all their stuff, and then they brought back a Maw Crusher to go and fight. And so all the ridiculousness kept going on and on and on. And I'm like, oh, wait, we're, we're never going to catch up. I'm going to go do something crazy. And then I sent my Griffin, my Phoenix, and my Hurricaneum to run down a bunch of their stuff with, the object with their objectives instead of running away and securing it, doing the smart thing. And my Griffin got into combat, right? I'm like, all right, so if he dies on a two-up, he lives, has D3 wounds back, and then just comes back and deep strikes wherever, nine inches away. Nice, easy, you know, whole thing. I would actually through an odd thing, keep the objective if I don't die, and then just use it as a teleport to get away. And then my griffin was left on a wound. He couldn't even die. Real shame. Real shame of it. And I killed a bunch of stuff. Uh, left. A, it, it was just a bloodbath. It was just fun. It was a great way, because uh, we, no, we drove out there. It was a nice drive. It was a scenic drive going through the eastern shore of Maryland. But it was a nice way to to wind down the night. And we lost horribly, but we're not here for that. We're here for the narrative. And the other team has all the objectives and won this town. And we'll be back next year to take it from them. <laughs> the next day, feeling a little bit better is uh, the 1500 Age of Sigmar tournament. And I've got my list up. I've got a nice picture of my army. And so, again, the rules for this were no named heroes or characters. So, you know, Lotan, he's out. If anyone who knows what the, the unit named Lotan is in uh, Deepkin, gosh, I hope he gets better in the new book when they eventually get one, because he's kind of... Anyway. So it was a cool thought experiment of, all right, I don't have to build for Bellacor. I don't have to build to fight a Teclis. I don't have to build to fight a Marathi. You know, what do I do? Um, some people skewed heavily into weird builds. I went for a mixed arms list with cavalry, a monster. I went Futan Floodtide to give myself rerolling ones to wound on my mounts. I gave my Eidolon of the Storm Terranite Venom which I always say is Night Terror Venom, so it's, it's funny that I actually got it right in the first try, which is rerolling ones to wound, and also minus one to the bravery of the unit that I actually do damage to, because I can very easily get him to be a two-up rerolling ones, at least, if not, I get the ritual off to be uh, rerolling all his hits, and then he's a two-up to wound on the spear, which is the, the, the good profile, so I'm putting the rerolling ones to wound on that. Um, and also being Futan on my run and charge turns as Deepkin, I reroll once to hit. I'm Futan, so I'll get two of those battle rounds. And the other fun comp thing of this, besides the custom battle plans, besides the no-named heroes and the smaller board, is we also only played four rounds instead of five. So I wanted to be able to use all my abilities as quickly as possible, because I don't have that fifth battle round to play catch-up you know, and with the smaller tables, the smaller points, the shorter amount of rounds, uh, we had games that each game round lasted, I believe, like two hours, and none of my games went to time, mostly because everything was just, you know, I'm deep kid, I'm smashing people, um, or I'm getting smashed, one or the other, but no one really had a problem with the, the, the shorter time or anything. And going, going with this, you know, my general is a Tidecaster with a command trait Lord of Storm and Sea to give me plus two to my bravery, to all my very low bravery stuff. I've got the spell Arcane Corrasion to be a long-range mortal wound artillery piece. Uh, the My battle line is a unit of Nomardi Reavers, the Archers, a unit of Thralls. I actually just painted up the Reavers for this with my... Uh, my noir horrors of the deepkin army with the the blood water the whole I got a lot of compliments the whole time and I was very happy. I need to work on that display board to get more hobby score. Um, and then I've got two units of Ashlean guard. They're the defensive eels. I've got uh, one shark. My main man Bruce uh, with the harpoon launcher. I've got Shelly baby girl with the uh, reverberating carapace uh, mount trait. To extend her aura ranges to 15 inches. 
So, you know, that's the plus one to save aura, that's the plus one to hit aura for Namarty. And the, the the killer combo that I can do is on my run and charge or run and shoot turn with that re-rolling ones to hit, I can very easily place my Reavers into a position where they could rapid fire and be a plus to hit from the turtle, plus to wound from the Eidolons, big 18-inch aura. And I'm just generally, like, they're hitting, I can get them, instead of fours and fours, to threes and threes, rolling ones to hit. And most of my army, I can find some way to make it hit and wound on a two. Whether it was all out attack, or the different auras, or whatever. And I was, and again, all my mounts, like the shark, the turtle, generally was hitting on a two, wounding on a two. And, you know, it was, I can manipulate the order of when... I do my different turns because my Tidecaster's the general. There is so much tech in this list. I love it. At 2,000 points, I uh, I bump up the Reavers to a 20-man. I've got a third unit of defensive eels, an extra shark, and an extra unit of thralls, if I remember right. Uh, and again, this will be different once the winter FAQ comes out and someone says, Rocco, that list is illegal, not knowing the timestamp of when this video was. But everything fits nicely in a battle regiment, so I'm one drop. Uh, my grand strategy is dominating presence to just have more units on the table than them in our, from our starting armies, which deep can, that's very easy to do. And my triumph is bloodthirsty to uh, reroll charge rolls, because I'm, I'm, I'm getting basically a board-wide plus one to wound already. I don't need that triumph. I'm good on my bravery because either my stuff is dead or I've got command points because I'm not spending command points on anything. And I like to reroll charges, which allows me to then spend the command point somewhere else for bravery. And, it, you know, it, it's a it's a cycle, but I like having that trait and that triumph. Um, And, you know, as a one drop, I can go first. I can choose to make my, oh, I drop first. You know, I'll finish deploying, then I'll choose who gets to go first. And generally, as Deepkin, for my play style, I like playing very reactionary. And I'm very set up defensively with how I deploy. Um, so for my deployment, basically, uh, the little foot wizard up front put her behind the turtle, then that's my deployment. I have the eels up front, a shark to a flank. Turtle and the Namarty centralized. And generally central with my Eidolon, so that I'll be able to affect most of my stuff. You know, my shark can go off and do whatever it wants on its own. It's self-reliant that way. I've got a very, very nice amount of shooting. And I want everything to stay near the turtle for all the and the Eidolon for all the different buffs. And I have a very mobile castle with this. So game one. Uh, again, I've got the game up on the screen here where it was a they're all custom battle plans so how the scoring works is each player turn when it's your turn right when it's your turn each player um is playing for five objectives and when it's your turn you check to see which objectives you own and then you put your score down right your opponents uh also because everything is a four foot by four foot board those squares are um uh, uh, what, six inches? Yeah, because the deployments are all 12 inches up. So you get a very nice scale. It's very easy to set up the objectives that you need. And objectives were actually provided, objective markers were provided by the tournament, which is not normal and very nice. Um, and that at the end of the game scoring, what that means is if you hold the objective at the end of the game after you score it for your final battle round, each player that holds an objective would burn it, and then you get bonus points for it. And there is a cap on how many points you can score for this battle plan. And how the actual weight of like win, loss, draw, and all that is, is actually by how many points you score throughout the tournament, instead of it just being a straight win, loss, draw. Though, to be fair, if you're winning the game, you probably own enough of the objectives because the the table is smaller and the other person will probably be tabled or bleeding enough out at the end of the game of their army that you'll probably hold more objectives and you'll hit the scoring cap. All right, so my first round opponent 
was uh, Iron Jaws. And it was actually The Ringer because someone was a coward and wouldn't face... I have no idea. They had to drop. It happens. Um, and it was a big walk. And you're seeing my one eel uh, champion there who had to stand alone because he got swarmed. And it was a fun game for me. I didn't flip the tide because it was uh, mostly or mostly it was Iron Jaws on foot, backed up by uh, War Chances, a Mega Boss on foot. Some highlights for the game were my uh, Namardi Reavers, the Archers, were able to rapid fire shoot into the mega boss on foot and kill him outright and you know my army's whole thing is i make i will hit and wound you you have to make all the armor saves not a lot of my stuff has rend but i have volume of attacks and the things that i do have rend on are very big damage attacks like the four damage turtle fins or the bites from the shark or the turtle or the spear of the eidolon you know, when I do have run, it's going to hurt. But when I don't, I'm just going to be death by a thousand cuts here. And I sent my shark up the left flank to hold the left objective. And then I just swarmed forward. I double turned, if I remember right. Uh, game was over. I, sco- I would have overscored on points. And, you know, I still... That, another thing with this, too, there were no battle tactics because it's narrative gaming. Uh, there were uh, grand strategies, but again, the most points you could score was 20. So we just capped me at 20. And I took a very convincing win. <clears throat> Game two, you may be wondering who's in the with the light in the picture. Is that red-haired Jesus? No, that is his name is Scooter. He is a very good player from around where I used to be. And uh, he terrorizes maryland his brother uh, caleb even is doing all the different gts uh they're gr- amazing players uh scooter showed up because he didn't know it was a narrative tournament he saw it said gt on there and he's like ah oh, cool i can win some itc points and uh, there weren't any itc points but he did very good for himself that weekend and i squared up with him he had iron jaws so technically <laughs> two iron jaws based armies here we go um, and he had, it was, uh, pretty much all pigs, uh, Maw Crusher, a couple of war chances. We were both one drops. <coughs> Excuse me. As you can see, there were more objectives in the middle. This actually mirrors what the big battle was on the day before. And, um, the big important thing is when we burn objectives, they're worth more. If you hold your at you know your opponent's objectives, this the max point score you could get is higher, and you also see the other picture I have in this game is a war chanter and four pigs. So let me explain. You know, Rocco, why is this about Scooter? Well, so I won the roll off to see who deployed first. I did. I made him go first. All right, this is battle round one. He does all his movement crap. You know, he moves his, his Maw Crusher, what, he move 10, 12 inches. He double moves it, double moves two units of pigs. As a third unit of pigs hold his left objective, full court presses into my deployment zone, right? And Iron Jaws, when they, when they fight and kill a unit, they get smashing and bashing. So they can pick another unit to fight, and another unit to fight, and another unit to fight. And he got ballsy and actually uh, went after my... Alapex, my shark first, just barely killed it. And then he went after my uh, Namardi uh, Thralls, just barely killed them. My Reavers actually got to overwatch his Mega Boss and take off a wound or two. And it scared him because he's like, 10, 10 archers that no one takes did 30 attacks? And, you know, that that's the story of my, my games is those Reavers always earned their points back and then some. And actually, my whole army, everything but the Thralls, because everybody knew to kill them first, um, in this case, second, uh, pretty much always earned their points back. And I'm okay with that, because my army did great. But in this case, he killed the Reavers too. 
and then he killed a unit of eels, and then he left one unit of eels with one model left. And then he's like, wow, man, that was a crazy battle round. I'm like, battle round? Scooter, I didn't even get to go yet. He's like, what? And uh, that was our joke for a good chunk of the game. Uh, and then I hit back with my Eidolon and my turtle. And um, Shelly Baby Girl, gosh, she probably, what, we... Like, he killed seven, 800 points of my stuff, and then I killed about six, 700 points back. And then I got to go bottom of one. And he's like, oh, yeah, man, you know, I'm going to best day ever, uh, which is uh, the heroic action to give plus one save and plus one to wound to the uh, the Maw Crusher. It's not called best day ever, but that's the, the shorthand for it. It's, I believe it's called the finest hour, but, you know, it's the jokes that you remember more than the actual names of the rules half the time. He did that on the Maw Crusher, and I'm like, cool, that's great. Uh, I retreated my one eel out of combat with his pigs. Because I'm like, if I'm going to stay in this game, I need to steal all the objectives that he just took. I need to move around, hold my home objective, murder everything I can, sh uh, get my turtle free, and ignore the Maw Crusher and one of the units of pigs at least. Because I need to focus fire stuff down. I will not be killing the Maw Crusher because it has too many pluses to save at the moment. And it also had an ethereal, not ethereal, it had the uh, Amulet of Destiny for the 5-up ward save. So that was like 19 wounds because he killed, He got an extra wound for killing something. 19 wounds on a 3-up save for the 5-up ward. That was actually a 2-up save now because of his buff. And I just said, nope. If I'm going to be in this game, I have to double turn him. And also, I flipped the tides... So I changed the order of which my buffs each round happened. So round one, I was rerolling ones to hit. And I could run and charge or run and shoot. And round two, I had my always strikes first round. So even if I didn't get the turn and he came into me, I'd still be fighting him first with all my stuff. I wouldn't be able to get all my buffs off, but I'd get enough of them off that it would matter. So what happened was I won the roll off. For battle round two, I went and uh, came in, killed the Maw Crusher, but I was able to get my eel to auto run and steal his home objective, which evened out the score a lot. Um, and as you can see, um. One thing we didn't do, which is actually really funny, that I'm now reading, is each enemy unit removed from the board earns you one victory point to a maximum of five victory points. I actually should have had five more victory points, and I would have been a little bit higher seated. Dang it! This is why you read the pack! <laughs> That's hysterical. Um, eh, stuff happens. Anyway, it ended up being such a murder fest both ways. The picture of the War Channer and those pigs were the only units left on the table by the time we were done. And Scooter scored his max 35 points. I scored 20, which now reading this would have been actually 25 points. But we'll get over that later. That's fine. Um, that's just very funny to me. Don't mind me. And, but, but the moral of the story is I was able to take what should have been a dehabilitating loss and still rack up enough of a score to the 20 that I submitted that it was close. And the only reason that he got his 35 at the end was, you know, he owned the objectives at the end of the game. And that just got him all these extra points. And it made it look a little bit more like a blowout than it actually was. Amazingly tight game. It came down to he killed my Eidolon to the wound which freed him up to then charge my turtle, which gave him impact hits from his pigs to mortal wound my turtle down enough to just barely kill her. I failed, um, I think, two armor saves at the end, but it was just enough damage to do it from all the mortal wound impact hits. And it was just so close and such a nail-biter that if the turtle lived, I would have been able to kill the stuff around her. Um, and it was just that good. Game three, 
All right, we definitely did this right, though. Don't worry. Um, where this is actually built more as a defensive battle plan, where you want at the end of the game to hold your home objectives more than your opponents because it just scores you more bonus points and it that, that's the other thing i like about these custom battle plans is it makes you play a different way than you normally see and i actually got another iron jaws player this was a big wah again <laughs> so i got two big wahs and a straight up iron jaws it was whatever the sub scooter played whatever made uh the gore grunters battle line but I basically got three Iron Jaws armies for the whole tournament, and I got my revenge for this third game. I I ran him over. It was it was a fun game. the The gentleman I played, David, was awesome. Uh, and he played it more reserved. He did because you know. He saw and heard what happened before, and he's like, all right, so I'm just going to hang back a little bit, try to hold on to my home objectives, make me, the Deepkin player, overextend and try to get me. And unfortunately for him, again, with all my buffs and everything that happened, and, you know, you can't, unfortunately, all-out defense reliably multiple units. You know, generally, you can't. Um, the Mega Bosses have a weird thing where you can repeat a a command for the command like you can issue it to multiple units um it it didn't help it didn't matter i was able to because of how the table was and how he had to spread out his units i was able to just come in like a wrecking ball uh again flipping the tides was nice getting to use my all my abilities throughout the course of the game and this battle plan had no maximum score, and I was able to score 42 points from burning everything, taking everything, repeated scoring of everything, and it was just such an awesome time for me uh, and my deepkin, and I had Dave laughing the whole time with every joke, a very goofy thing, because again, it's a narrative thing, and it shouldn't be taken serious at all. There are, are no tournament points. You're playing at different points costs. You're there to have fun. And then my deepkin just decided to say, hey, man, we're, we're tired of these orcs. We're going to mess them up. And they did. And I'm very proud of how my army performed. And at the end of the day, um, I got fifth place out of 29 people. Finished 2-1. and one. My score was like 81 points or something. And, you know, we're going to... The, the person in front of me got 87 points, so that wouldn't have mattered. The five point whatever. Uh, and it was a very, very fun time. Had by all. And then, I don't know why that says that. Here we go. Hitting the button. The big narrative battle on Saturday. This is my Stormcast Eternals. A mix of old Stormcast, new Stormcast. I converted that uh, Lord Castle and the little Griffhound. Because my dog is a terrier, so I painted the Griffhound as my dog. Um, I've got uh, six castigators because somehow they're more efficient than the two ballista that I normally would bring for this kind of a thing. I was Astral Templars and Stormkeep. And what the big battle was was this, there's a big overarching narrative of the different years of different invasions going on. I was on the Order side. And they had four different tables. Where there were three of them were a series of three v three games and one was a two v two because uh, a couple people didn't show up, and each table had a different main objective that could affect the other tables. Like there was um, a forest table that I believe did um, pluses to your saves characteristic it was a plus two if you controlled the objectives there, and if you controlled multiple of them, you can give multiple tables the bonus. There was a table that gave you plus one attack and plus one damage to one of your units. Our table was heal four wounds of something, whether it was four one wound models or four wounds onto a bigger model. And we were playing in a graveyard theme table. And then the fourth table was like a chaos hell spawn gate you were trying to get. And if you controlled it, you did four mortal wounds to someone else's table. 
Um, and again, we were on the order side. I was with a buddy of mine named Howie, who was also a basement war gamer like myself. Our club was represented very well. I played off finally against our uh, our current president. His name's Jared. Love him of the Owen Five podcast. Been a guest in there a few times. And I've all the years I've known him, I never got to play him. And then it was like a joke that we got to play a hundred points of narrative. Um, but the cool thing about this with my Stormcast is the Vindictors get a special rule. Where from battle round three on, they get to count as three models per model for the purpose of capturing objectives. So my 10-man unit of Vindictors actually counted as 30 bodies. And the Castigators had decent shooting. Uh, My Holy Command was Thunderbolt Volley to get a free hero phase shooting. I've got the Teleport Prayer from the uh, Lord Relictor. I have the command trait master of magic to reroll a cast in an unbind and the arcane tome uh i believe i took flaming weapon i'll be honest I, all i ever did was cast mystic shield i don't even remember what spell i really gave him i lost the paper so i had to make this up um but the whole the combo is the vindictors are a three up armor save right so the castellan picks a friendly stormcast unit holy within 18 which he was always standing next to the unit, gives them plus one of their save. I would Mystic Shield. Generally, I I think I... I don't think I rolled below a 10 when trying to cast that spell. And no one ever unbound it. um, Or had the ability to. And they'd get another plus one to their save. And then, because of Astral Templars, no one could roar at me or use a monstrous action. So I kept them at a two up save at least ignoring rend one and when i needed to i could ignore rend two and so you know how did this battle go how'd we do as you can see from this picture uh we got swarmed so i'm my stormcast my buddy howie in this picture has um (laughs) not that you can really see them but we have Fire Slayers, and then our, our third partner had uh, Seraphon. It was a Heavy Source Knight and Carnosaur Army. And another cool thing about this table, now that you can really see, but if we're going to have our mouse out over here, there's a mausoleum here, and off camera there's a mausoleum there. If you have a hero within six inches of it, you got a, a custom artifact from one of the lists there. And it was like plus six to run, move, and charge. Another one was sixes to hit, do three mortal wounds, and the attack sequence stops. I don't even remember. The third one was, uh, actually, I do remember. It was rerolling saves. So we put them all on the Carnosaur. There were a couple turns of him just being there. While the rest of us bum-rushed the middle, the Carnosaur and the Saurus Knights held our right flank for the most part. Because that was our order side. And the other side was Night Haunt, Nurgle, um, before the new book, and Beasts of Chaos, which was really fun. Um... The guy had 30 Ungor Raiders and a bunch of Dragon Ogres. I, I refer to them as Drogers. And for the remainder of this video, we'll refer to them as Drogers. Um, and Jared had a bunch of Blight Kings. And the uh, Night Haunt player had, as you can see, Spirit Hosts, uh, the Blade Revenants. There was a Knight of Shrouds and a, a Lord Executioner. But what what... And with the, the spirit torment there. But what had happened was uh, we took first turn. Uh, our Seraphon player flooded the right flank. Uh, the rest of us moved up onto the objective. And I, but in the start of the hero phase, I teleported my uh, castigators and had them shoot in the, in the hero phase to kill my opponent's general of the, uh, my main opponent, which was the Night and Haunt player. The uh, the Knight of Shrouds, and through that, and my normal shooting phase got him, uh, which uh, really hindered the, the Night Haunt abilities to buff up the extra attacks and things that I, I, I needed to stop. And then the poor guy on his turn, he charged in his Lord Executioner into my um, Lord Relictor, who, is, as you can see, is being swarmed by ghosts, but. He didn't kill him then. That that four was how many wounds he had taken. And then between my Vindictors and the Relictor, killed him for his troubles. 
And then as you can see here, he gets swarmed again by blade guys because we didn't we didn't double turn. So he's gonna actually live through that, and then the vindictors are gonna come in and kill all those blade guys in that picture. He actually dies to spirit hosts, while my um my poor poor screen of the uh, crossbowman there is just it you know it's the shock value of i can just take off your heroes at will so they took all the heat while the fire slayers just kept moving up uh you could also see jared's uh foot nurgle hero i forget what he is he's a lord of something actually solo killed the um the magma troth here and then took one look at all my dudes and these other fire slayers and said nope. And then went to try to come over on this side to fight instead. Um, and it was just a bloodbath in the middle. And it was we were the closest table. Like the, the chaos gate table went to the chaos side. The desert table with the extra attacks and damage swung very heavily to the order side. Because another buddy of mine who's in the club, I didn't remember to ask him for permission for his name, but he played Iron Jaws, really awesome guy, great at 40k too, and he was down on his Iron Jaws for a bit before the new book, and his Maw Crusher just went and wrecked face, and I'm just so proud of him. Another, but actually Kevin again, on the um, the, uh, the, the, the Guy Ran Forest Jungle Table, his Stormcast went and showed the hell up too with a Deepkin player of ours. Um, and they won their table. So it, it came down to, if on our table, if we lost, the game was a draw. If we won, we won the whole thing. So we had a very hotly contested thing. It was just awesome. And another cool rule for this was if you lost a unit of troops in your hero phase, you could roll a dice and on a five up, they'd come back from a table edge. So that's how it was such a grind because people kept respawning units of like 30, 30 dudes to come in from a table edge in their deployment zone and then come in. They got to move. They got to fight. And it was a constant battle. and It was so much fun. And the game came down to the Beast of Chaos players summoned a Chaos Gargan. I forgot that War Scroll even existed. He summoned the Chaos Gargan and got the charge onto my Vindictors, who for the most of the game because every time a couple of them would die because i would eventually roll ones um we got the buff to just bring back four wounds of dudes which would be two models of mine and then um we kept getting buffs from different tables and it was cool we'd go through the different tables like hey i need this buff to be offensive i need this buff to be defensive and we'd work together and it came down to he needed to kill my vindictors or i was going to count as too many bodies because we had an equal amount of like hearth guard berserkers to um blight kings the ghost all died um enough of the lizards held that right flank and stopped the drogers uh from coming even into the fight that uh the carnosaur was able to come in and kill stuff on the objective and count as points for us so it literally came down to did my spearman hold and i got to actually attack the gargant before it went i bracketed it enough that it ended up doing one wound and we held the day, and it was just so freaking awesome. So freaking happy. Um, and it was just so much fun. And I got to see a bunch of my clubmates that I haven't seen because of COVID and because I moved. And, you know, Team Order came through, and we did it. And this video is probably hella long, but thank you so much for watching and hanging out with us here. And, you know, I do Shore Hammer again. And as I like to say at the end of all of our videos, I thank you for watching. Whew. Class dismissed. Bye.